Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and this is another A-level maths tricky question. Shout out to Oscar C for sending this question in. This is my first mechanics question that I'm doing. Uh, recent ones have been pure and this is from an Edexcel paper. So let's give it a go. Okay, so it says a small ball is projected from the origin on horizontal ground with velocity 9 plus 12. The ball passes through A, which has um, H meters vertically above the ground. And when the ball does reach A, it is traveling at velocity of lambda I minus J, where lambda is a constant. And it says find the value of H. So a good way to start any projectiles question is to do a horizontal and a vertical SUVAT. So this one vertical, I'd write S, U, V, A and T and here I'd write S, U, V, A and T. Now vertical, the acceleration is always minus 9.8 due to gravity and horizontal, the acceleration is always zero because we assume there are no uh, forces acting in the horizontal direction. And we know the initial velocity for the uh, vertical is 12 and for the horizontal is 9. That's given in the question. And here's the key point that because there's no acceleration in the horizontal, it means that the um, velocity in the horizontal will remain constant. It will remain at 9 throughout the whole flight. So when we're at point A and we're told this is our velocity, we know that lambda must equal 9 because the i component, the horizontal component, is always going to be 9, so therefore lambda is 9. And that means that it's traveling with a velocity at that particular point in the horizontal of minus 9 because we've got i lambda for the horizontal, which is 9, and we've got minus j lambda for the vertical, which therefore must be minus 9. Okay, great. So we can use the horizontal, uh, sorry, the vertical now to work out the uh, height, which is what we're actually looking for, h. So let's call this uh, h. And we're looking for the SUVAT, which doesn't have t. So that is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. We have v squared is minus 9 squared, which is 81. We have u squared, which is 12 squared, which is 144. Two lots of minus 9.8 is minus 19.6, and that's multiplied by s, which is the height off the ground. So rearranging this formula gives me that height is equal to 144 minus 81 over 19.6, and that comes out as a value of about 3.21, and that will be meters. Okay, next question, part B, it says state the minimum speed of the ball as it travels from O to A. Well, we've already said that in the horizontal, it's going to remain constant at nine. Uh, the component of the horizontal velocity will be nine throughout. And the vertical component will start off at 12. And then when it gets to the top here at that maximum point, it will be zero. It won't be moving up. Um, anymore and then it will start moving downwards. So the velocity in the j direction will be zero at some point and the velocity in the i direction will remain at nine throughout. So that's going to be the minimum that it could possibly be and at that the speed is always the square root of the two components squared so that will just equal nine. So that is the minimum possible speed. Okay, next part says, find the length of time for which the speed of the ball is less than 12 meters per second. Okay, I'm gonna grab some more space. And the speed of the object is going to equal the uh, magnitude of the velocity. So the square root of vi squared plus vj squared. And we again, we've said before that the velocity in the i direction was always going to be 9. So that's the square root of uh, 9 squared plus vj squared. And we want that to be less than 12. 
Okay, so let's rearrange this um, equation. We could get 81 plus vj squared is less than or equal to 144 by squaring uh, both sides. And then we could get that um, the velocity in the j direction squared will be less than, take 81 from that, is 63. And this is a, um, a quadratic inequality where if I were to draw a quick sketch of a quadratic, um, and if I want it less than 63, let's say 63 is along there, then it's going to be in between those two x values down here. So it's a bounded one, so we would say that minus 63, square rooted, sorry, less than the velocity in the j, less than 63, sorry, square root 63. Okay, let's try and um, understand what this means in terms of our diagram. So the speed at the start is going to be greater than 12, and that's because the velocity components are 9 and 12, so the magnitude will be definitely greater than 12. And then the velocity in the j is going to be decreasing, and that's because gravity is going to be pulling it down, so it's going to be slowing down in the j direction. And then we're going to get to a point here, let's call it x, where the velocity in the j direction is exactly root 63, and therefore the speed is going to be equal to 12. And then again, the gravity is going to be pulling it down, so the speed is going to be decreasing, and the velocity in the j direction is decreasing. And we're going to get to a point here where the velocity in the j direction is zero, and we've already shown that the speed there is nine. And then again, the velocity in the j is now going to be turning negative, and it's going to be getting more and more negative. And we're going to get to a point here, let's call it y, where we get to negative 60 root 63 in the j and that gives us a speed of 12 and then after that point the velocity in the j is again going to be um, getting even more negative so the speed is going to be increasing and that will be more than 12. So what we need to do is we need to work out the time in between these two um, uh, positions. Now let's write S U V a and T and the in, at the start of this yellow journey uh, the velocity in the um, vertical direction this is is root 63 and I want it to end when the velocity is minus root 63 I know the acceleration is minus 9.8 and I'm looking for the time which means I don't need to consider the displacement so I need to use V equals U plus AT. So I have minus root 63 is equal to root 63 plus, oh no, A is minus, minus 9.8 T. I can rearrange this to get 9.8 T is equal to um, two lots of root 63. So T is equal to, Two root sixty three over nine point eight, and this gives me a value of one point six seconds. And the final question is that the model could be refined by considering air resistance. Suggest one other refinement to the to the model that could make it more realistic. And you could say that the uh, the shape of the ball is considered, so it's not a particle. Or you could say the spin of the ball as well. That's another good answer. And we are done. I hope you found that useful. Please do like and subscribe if you did. And let me know in the comments what type of question you'd like me to do next. Bye for now.